Hey guys, Cooper here, Diesel Power Products. And I'm Kyle with Diesel Power Products. Oh my gosh, Kyle. It's hey, been kid. a while since we've been in front of the camera. I know. Today's a fun topic, um, and it's, you know, we've talked about this in the past, but just uh, for anyone new to uh, trucks and Jeeps and looking to add big tires and whatnot, this is the number one power adder that you can do to your truck. And I think it's also the number one, like most overlooked thing for a lot of people because they're just afraid of doing it or they just don't know enough information about it maybe. Yeah. But I think a lot of people are hesitant to do gearing, which is what kind of brought up this little video and topic. We're getting ready to do some gears Yep. in uh, one of our rigs. So we'd figure we'd share a little knowledge. Yeah, well, and, and I think, um, you know, two things kind of lean in on, on this one being overlooked. One, the, the cost. It is not inexpensive. No. Um, and two, these newer trucks with these multi-speed trannies, uh, you know, going up in tire size isn't as noticeable with these newer vehicles as it has been in the past. Yeah, you're going from like an old six speed to now they're or doing even 10 a, speeds. Or even a four speed. Four speed yeah. I mean, <laughs> your, your age is showing youngin. <laughs> but yeah, like a four speed um, or even some three speed automatics too. Yeah. Now you got eight and 10 speed is kind of the norm. Yep, and I think, and we'll dive into this more deeper too, but a lot of people are just like, oh, bigger tires, I need bigger gears to compensate it. But a lot more goes into it to get your powertrain back to where it's at full potential. And one of those things that plays into it is the transmission. Yeah. A lot of, I think a lot of people don't understand or might not know um, that if you do go to a bigger tire size, yeah, the gears are recommended, but not only just because you're going to a bigger tire size, but also because it's gonna drastically improve the life and the performance of your transmission. And take take load off of the drivetrain. Cause totally. you've got mechanical advantage. So now you're not taking that whatever 373 gear ratio and really putting the hurting on it, trying to get those bigger tires. And some of these, you get upwards, I mean, 40s are kind of the new norm. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and you get a, a 40 inch tire on a, on, a, on a wheel and you could be 200, 250 pounds yeah. per corner. It adds, they're heavy, I know. Yeah, Changing and uh, that, that's a lot of extra a lot of extra force. Not only that, but you know, you're paying for a 10 speed or an eight speed tranny. Uh, you should use all the gears. Yeah, and if you do go from a 35, which a lot of trucks are coming on now, and you go to that 40, and you don't regear it, you're you're not optimizing the power band mm -hmm. of that transmission whatsoever. So it might seem like, oh, I went to a 40, I still go through all my my gears fine, and I still feel like I have a lot of power, but you're not optimizing the performance of that transmission. Yeah, at all. and your your peak area. So they they calculate everything based on, okay, well, I've got this gear ratio on this tire size at freeway speeds, 70 miles an hour. Right. This engine's the most efficient at this RPM range. Well, we've just changed that. Yeah, drastically. And, <laughs> and now you're either not using ninth and 10th gear or seventh and eighth, and you're staying in the lower ones because it can't sustain mm -hmm. the eighth grade, or uh, eighth grade, eighth, eighth speed. <laughs> or a uh, 10th speed in that transmission and still maintain an RPM range that allows you to have any power. So gears are the great equalizer. You can, you can reset everything with a, a good set of gears that are calculated for your transmission and tire size so that your transmission shifts in a peak fashion within the range where it was programmed to and you get to use all your gears and the amount of power that you get to throw back at the ground Big time. is huge. Yeah. Um, and you, you hear us throwing around these numbers, 373, um, 410, they're 355 gears, heck, they're 321 gears. That is a ratio of how many revolutions for the pinion gear to one revolution of the ring gear. The truck that we're redoing, the Super Duty, it's got 355 gears. For, for every 3.55 rotations of that pinion, that ring gear will rotate once. Now we went to a 38 inch tire, 10 speed trans, knowing the RPM range of that engine. The gear ratio we chose to go with is a 430 gear ratio, which means for every 4.3 rotations of that pinion, we get one rotation of the ring gear, which will put us 
not exactly back to where stock was with 355 and, and stock size tires, but gives us a little bit of mechanical advantage. Now where the benefits of that are for everyone is you're taking load off of the drivetrain, you're taking load off the trans, you're taking load off of the drive shafts, you're taking load off of any of that stuff because now it takes less work for it to move those big tires than it did if we kept those big tires and the 355 gear ratio, which that high output power stroke had no problem doing. No. <laughs> However, if we want to maximize everything, gears are the number one adder. Yeah. And it goes to a lot of other aspects too, down to your throttle response, your fuel economy, all those things. If you re-gear to your appropriate tire size, like I said, it just optimizes the power band from all of those different aspects. And now where, where this gets a little bit interesting in, in vehicles like Jeeps in particular, oh. which the Eco Diesel is a phenomenal engine and, and you can gear it a lot like you would the bigger diesel engines. For These multi-speed trans make little engines seem big and big engines seem bigger. Typically in the past on the, on the gas version of the Jeeps, people would wanna gear a lot deeper. They would wanna go with a, a lot lower gear ratio, it's a numerically higher number just to get more power out of the engine, whether it be the 3.6 or the two liter turbo. And typically if you're, say, in a, in a, in a Jeep going to a 37 inch tire, right. the Rubicons come with four tens. Uh, they're about a 32, 32 inch tire, which that, that's fine, but a lot of people will jump all the way up to like a 513 gear set to run a 37 or maybe even a 538 and sacrifice some of the fuel mileage gains just to have better off-road characteristics and make that engine feel a lot more powerful right. than it is. The Eco Diesels, you can gear things a little bit different. I've found that with the Eco Diesel, even a, a shift to a 410 gear set is just about perfect for 37s and um, on my diesel Gladiator, I've got 488 gears and I'm running 40 inch tires. Now to get holistic on the vehicle, <laughs> Jeeps and, and trucks a little bit different, you know, typical truck and base model Jeep uh, transfer case gear ratio is like a 272 to a three to one, somewhere right in there gear right. ratio. Um, which gives you some mechanical advantage, but the Rubicons have a four to one, which is great because then you could, depending on, on how your gearing is baseline, you know that the four to one T case is there for you for the low range for off-roading. And this could take us down a huge rabbit hole <laughs> yes. of talking about, okay, which, which do I gear it for? Do I gear it for off-road? Because if you have a 272 to one T case, yeah, you would probably want to gear it a little bit higher numerically, right. lower gear ratio, so that when you're in that 272, you get more control, more crawl capabilities and everything else. But if you've got a four to one T case or something aftermarket that gives you a lower gear set, you, you know, you can, as deep. yeah, you don't have to go as deep. You can gear it somewhere a little bit different, which is why on like a Rubicon diesel JL or, or Gladiator, going to a 410 with a 37 is still totally fine and heck you could probably just about get away with 373s the the thing i've found with the 373s is eighth gear gets to be kind of mm, questionable on passes and things like that and right. the downshifts get to be a little bit interesting and and you kind of want to get that throttle response back in everywhere else and that 410 jump might not seem like a lot but it's you know about probably around 150 rpms different at uh, highway speeds, which is noticeable for yeah. fuel mileage and noticeable for passing power and everything else. So, For somebody who's just diving into this with very to little knowledge and they want to re-gear their truck. Very to little? Very, okay, let's Little let me, to no? Cut that out. No, don't cut that out. That's gold. Little to no. <clears throat> so for somebody who's just diving into this, they want to re-gear their truck, what else would they might need to make everything work the way it should, speedo, everything. Oh, I know where that. you're going with this. You're talking, There's you're talking little speedo piece. calibration. Yes. So. Yeah, which which is wonderful. Like even if you didn't do gears and you were jumping into bigger tire size. You're gonna want it. You're gonna want it. You're yeah. gonna want it for a few things. One, so the transmission knows what the heck it's doing because <laughs> otherwise it's like scratching its head because speeds and whatnot that it monitors that were a certain way with the stock size tire are all of a sudden different. So 
it goes back to like a bass um, set tuning and, and doesn't quite give you the crispness and the firmness that yeah. you want if it knows what it's working with. Yeah. It's, it's got to know everything. It's got to know tire size. It's got to know gear ratio. And some of them, there are a few aftermarket components that also have tuning capabilities um, matched with them, which can really bring out a whole other level of excitement when you gear them. Because you get the gearing changed in it and then updated for tire size and gear ratio, and it's a rocket ship. And yeah. you throw another 50 horse or whatever tuning capabilities are available on it with those diesels, and it's like, I just got, <laughs> I just got a whole new truck. And it feels like that when you do gears. I know you've had the chance to do it. I've yeah, done it. I do it in everything. With my Colorado, when I went up a tire size before I re-geared, and it just, you feel like that, oh yeah, that's normal. The truck's lagging just a little bit. You get gears and it feels like somebody completely retuned your motor. Oh yeah, um, they're rocket ships. Yeah, then. huge difference when you re-gear on all specs, all aspects um, of your powertrain. What would you recommend for installation? It is, this is, there are a lot of YouTube videos on it. I was it. just thinking the This same is thing. not one of those <laughs> yeah. one of those things. There, uh -uh. There's Do some it. specialty tools right. for case spreaders. There's some uh, that make the job go quicker and easier so you can get the shim stacks just right. There's some really fine characteristics that, uh, you know, how deep the gear set is, what the tooth pattern looks like when you when you check it, what the lash is. There, there are a lot of little aspects to this that this is one of those one of those installs that you really want someone that isn't like, oh, I did it once or twice, I watched a YouTube video, but they do hundreds of them. That's yeah. all they do. And those guys are worth their weight in gold in the amount of time it takes them to get it done and the reliability of it after the fact, so you're not wiping out gear sets or bearings or leaving mm -hmm. yourself stranded somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And I think something that's worth being noted, we don't even do our own gears in-house. No. We Every rig we build, that's one that we just A would specialist rather, who yeah. does it every day gets to do it. So like Cooper said, you're going to see a lot of DIY gear videos on YouTube. Don't try it yourself. <laughs> you're extremely you can familiar with it and, and, and reorder another set if you would like. You, you could. I mean, <laughs> and that's not to say there aren't people that can't do that kind of stuff because there are plenty of them out there. And oh, yeah. At some point in time, someone figured it out on their own. But it's one of those ones that uh, I've, I've changed gear sets. I've been in and out of a housing with a carrier a half dozen times <laughs> just trying to get it that one ten thousandth closer right. and get the gear lash to be right. And it just uh, the guys that know what they're doing the amount of times that they pull a, a carrier back out after the fact, mm -hmm. they're, they're pretty spot on, maybe once. Right. And they got it dialed in. That was that was a lot of information. I have no doubt that we probably caused people to have more questions yeah. than anything else. But uh, if, if you need some clarity on it, um, check the link in the description or visit the website, dieselpowerproducts.com. And we have sales staff that uh, enjoy talking about this stuff with you guys.